Honourable Members, pursuant to the requirements of Section 14 of the Parliament of Queensland Act 2001, members must immediately elect a member to be the Speaker before proceeding to any other business. Standing Order 39 provides that the Clerk shall call upon the member present in the House who has served in the House continually for the longest period and who is not a minister to take the chair for the purpose of the election of a Speaker. This member is known as the, known as the presiding member in standing orders for the purposes of the election of a Speaker. The longest continually serving member of the Legislative Assembly is Ms Fiona Simpson, member for Maroochydore, who was elected on 19 September 1992 and sworn in as a member of the 47th Parliament on 3 November 1992. In accordance with Standing Order 39, I call on the member for Maroochydore to take the chair as presiding member for the purpose of the election as of a speaker. Honourable members, before calling for nominations for speaker, I draw the attention of honourable members to the standing orders which provide that any member present in the chamber may be nominated as speaker. The proposer of a nomination must move that the member take the chair of the House as speaker. All nominations are to be seconded by a member. Members who have been nominated are required to indicate if they accept the nomination. After all nominations have been made, seconded and accepted, debate will then ensue. Debate on nominations shall be relevant to the question. In accordance with past practice, debate will occur regardless of the number of nominations received, and a time limit of five minutes will apply to all speeches. I remind honourable members that the provisions of the standing orders apply to this debate. I also remind on honourable members that whilst in the chair, the presiding members member has all the powers and authorities of the speaker. I now call for nominations. I call the Premier and Minister for Trade. Uh, Madam Presiding Member, I nominate the Honourable Member for Mulgrave, Curtis Warren Pitt, and I move that the Honourable Member take the chair of the House as Speaker. Yeah. I call the Member for Noosa to second the nomination. Madam Presiding Member, I second the nomination and the motion moved by the Premier and Minister for Trade. Yeah. Does the Honourable Member accept the nomination? I accept the nomination. Yeah. Are there any further nominations? I call the Leader of the Opposition. Madam Presiding Member, I nominate the Honourable Member for Mermaid Beach and move that the Honourable Member take the Chair of the House yeah. as Speaker. I call order members. Order members. I call the deputy leader of the opposition. Madam presiding member, I second the nomination and motion moved by the leader of the opposition. Yeah. Does the honourable member accept the nomination? <laughs> Madam presiding member. I gratefully and humbly accept the nomination. Are there order members? Order members. Are there any further nominations? I call the Premier. Thank you. I rise to nominate Mr Curtis Pitt, the Honourable Member for Mulgrave, as Speaker of the Legislative Assembly. If the House elects Mr Pitt as Speaker, I know that he will fulfil the role with distinction and dignity. Yeah. The Member for Mulgrave earnestly and diligently served the 56th Parliament as Speaker. He undertook that role with fairness, integrity and honesty. It is pleasing to see some continuity in that role. Yeah. If elected, he will be the first Speaker in 15 years since Speaker Hollis to serve more than one term in the Chair. Yeah. Mr Pitt is well respected by members on both sides of this House and on the crossbench, cross as evidenced by his nomination being seconded last term and this term by a crossbench member, and is well versed in the demands of political life, having been a member of this House since 2009. Yeah. He served as a minister in the Bligh government and held quite a number of shadow portfolios during the 54th Parliament, shouldering a heavy workload when opposition numbers were significantly reduced in this House. 
In the 55th Parliament, he held the role of Treasurer, presenting three straight budgets and delivering a surplus, improving Queensland's credit rating, delivering yeah. the strongest jobs growth figure in Queensland's history, lowering unemployment with the creation of more than 140,000 new jobs. No mean feat in those times. Yeah. The member for Mulgrave follows in on in that role from his father, the Honourable Warren Pip, who represented people of the Far North electorate for 17 years. Yeah. He is committed to serving the community he represents and improving the lives of all Queenslanders. Mr Pitt remains one of our most experienced and senior MPs. He has played and will continue to play a leadership role in the far north. He is a respected voice for regional Queensland more generally. Yeah. Mr Pitt graduated with a Bachelor of Arts in Politics from the James Cook University in Cairns, as well as working as a journalist and for local Cairns radio stations 4CA and Hot FM. The member for Mulgrave's service to the people of Queensland predates his election to this House. Prior to running for the seat of Mulgrave, Mr Pitt was appointed head of the Queensland Government's Indigenous Jobs and Enterprise Task Force. He had previously led the Government's Business and Skilled Migration Program. As a freshman MP, he brought to this place a reputation for um, thoughtfulness, a great intellect and a firm commitment to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander issues. Yeah. Mr Pitt is a proud father. His family means everything to him, and today his wife Kerry and children Tristan, Layla and Kobe are here to support him. His pride in them is only equalled by their pride in him. Yeah. Having now represented the people of Cairns in this chamber since 2009, both in opposition and in government, as well as in the Speaker's chair, he is well versed in the parliamentary and legislative process and will continue to bring that expertise to his role. The Parliament needs a person of energy, integrity and experience as its Speaker, also a person of fairness and even-handedness. I know that if elected, Mr Pitt will bring his well-known diligence, fairness and attention to detail to the role of Speaker in this House. His experience in managing the business of this House will stand him in good stead during the 57th Parliament. Given his enthusiasm for the game of rugby league, I'm confident that Mr Pitt will apply the same rigour to the rules of parliamentary debate as are applied by the best referees. Given his expectation that any game of rugby league should be presided over in a manner that is fair and equitable, I have every confidence that if he is elected Speaker and presides as the ultimate referee of this House, Mr Pitt will continue to employ the same expectation of himself, to uphold the standing rules, to interpret them fairly and to act impartially. He has an abiding respect and fondness for the institutions and the practices of our Queensland Parliament and works hard to ensure the contribution of all members make here is of the highest standard. After all, that is what each of us would ask of ourselves in this place. It therefore gives me much pleasure to move that Mr Curtis Pitt, the member for Mulgrave, take the chair of this House as Speaker. I call the member for Noosa. <laughs> Thank you. I rise to second the nomination of the member for Mulgrave as the Speaker of this House and to make some brief comments on the nomination. It has long been the practice in this House that the government of the day provides a nominee for Speaker, giving due consideration to the person who will afford this vital role the respect and diligence that it warrants. As a new member of this House in the 56th Parliament, I valued the counsel and advice afforded by the member for Mulgrave in assisting myself and others in carrying out their duties, as well an understanding of the rules and standing orders that apply to proceedings, even though I question some of these and will continue to do so. <laughs> the role of the Speaker is more than just presiding over the proceedings of the House. The Speaker makes decisions relating to the role of members of this House within their communities and that affect our capacity to undertake that role. Like myself and many others, the member for Mulgrave represents an electorate outside of Brisbane and understands the additional issues that affect members who represent in this House away from their electorates. His understanding of this has contributed to the inclusive way he has performed the role of Speaker during the 56th Parliament. His endeavours to bring about improved behaviours in this chamber is appreciated and in which I will continue to advocate for on behalf of Queenslanders. Members sitting on the crossbenches have an important role to play in holding the government to account and in ensuring that the views of those rep we represent are heard, as well that when we speak, we do so with credibility and informed objectivity. Robust debate is essential. Passionate advocacy is vital. 
being respectful of each other in this House and respectful of the institution of the Parliament will lead to much better outcomes sought by Queenslanders. We still have a way to go. However, the member for Mulgrave has demonstrated that he is prepared to make this a reality. I have every confidence that the member for Mulgrave will continue to fulfil the role of Speaker in an inclusive, fair and consultative way, showing respect for all members equally and for the practices and conventions of the House. That is why I second the nomination of the member for Mulgrave, Mr Curtis Pitt, as Speaker of the House. I urge all members to support his nomination, which in turn demonstrates our commitment to meet the expectations of our communities regarding this parliament and the behaviours and debates within. Thank you. I call the Leader of the Opposition. Yeah. Madam Presiding Officer, I rise to support uh, the member for Mermaid in taking the chair in this very honourable and important role, and I do so in recognition of his long and distinguished service, uh, not just this, in this place but indeed in local government. Uh, Ray Stevens is a knockabout sort of a bloke. He's someone who shares great relationships on both sides of this House. Uh, he's a born Queenslander. He served for, in the Albert Shire starting in 1988 as, a, as an alderman at the time. And in 1994 to 1997, he was the mayor not only of Albertshire but indeed of the Gold Coast during a, a, period, a period of great change in local government landscape and conducted himself uh, during that time in a manner that the city was proud of. Um, in 2006, he was elected to this place and I'd like to quote from his maiden speech. And it's this quote that I think shows why Madam Presiding Officer Ray Stevens would make a fine speaker. I believe in strong, unfettered and robust debate, carried out with passion, conviction and common sense. However, the principles of fairness, equity and polite consideration should always be the overriding constraints under which such enlivening debate should take place. Um, his conduct in this place between 2012 and 2015 as Leader of the House uh, also stands in, in good stead for this role and which is why we nominate him today. Uh, Mr Stevens, Madam Presiding Officer, uh, also enjoys a punt. And uh, he said to me before we walked in today, uh, Chris, I think I'm long odds. <laughs> and, and I think I'm blowing out a little bit as we get closer to the event. So, so with, uh, with that in mind, Madam Presiding Officer, can I make some comments about the other nominee, uh, Mr Curtis Pitt? It was uh, in a parliament that was lopsided that the friendship between myself and the member for Mulgrave was forged between 2012 and 2015. Uh, he is a man of good stature. Uh, he is a man of good decency. And he conducted himself in a manner in the last parliament that uh, all members respected and admired. Uh, but it was in my darkest hour, Madam uh, Presiding Officer, that the true colours of this man came to the fore. Uh, I only took two phone calls the morning after an election loss, and uh, one of them was from Curtis Pitt. And uh, it was at a time when I was looking at Twitter, and on my Twitter feed was all sorts of the machinations that go on about jostling for positions, and one of the jostling of positions was for the role of Treasurer. And uh, despite all of that, Despite all of the pressures, uh, he took the time to reach out to me, and uh, that is the mark of a fine, fine human being. Um, that said, Madam Presiding Officer, we are putting forward a, another man of good stature uh, and a man of good integrity, and uh, we hope that the House sees value in that nomination. Um, but I look forward, Madam, Madam Presiding Officer. <laughs> Uh, I look forward, Madam Presiding Officer, if the vote goes the way that the member for Mermaid Beach has indicated to me it might go, uh, I wish to quote from um, Mr Speaker's contribution in September to this place where he said, I wish to affirm the important principle that members should be afforded the opportunity to contribute to parliamentary debate. Accordingly, I will undertake to raise these issues with the Committee of the Legislative Assembly to consider whether any changes to legislation, standing orders or sessional orders are warranted. And in the 57th Parliament, uh, Madam Presiding Officer, where the government does have bolstered numbers, uh, it is more important than ever 
that every member, every member gets the opportunity to advocate not just for their values but their electorate, and I sincerely look forward to this parliament abiding by those laws. I call the Deputy Leader of the Opposition. Uh, thank you, Madam Presiding Member, and it is my privilege to second the motion uh, moved by the Leader of the Opposition and the nomination of the Member for Mermaid Beach to the High Office of Speaker in this House. Uh, the Office of the Speaker of the Queensland Parliament carries with it significant duties. They are ceremonial, procedural and administrative in nature. The role itself is premised on the position of the Speaker of the House of Commons. As Queensland lacks an upper house, I would argue that the role of Speaker is even more vital to the operation of the democratic life of our state, not just for ensuring the necessary scrutiny of legislation, but the role of interpreting and applying the standing orders to proceedings in this house. This house is Queensland's own forum, a place where ideas are tested, often vigorously, and for the government's agenda to be challenged by the opposition and the crossbench. And the Speaker bears responsibility for how this testing of ideas is conducted. It is these solemn responsibilities for which the opposition believes the member for Mermaid Beach to be perfectly equipped. Born in Townsville, the honourable member enjoyed a varied career history prior to his election in 2006. He worked for Pricewaterhouse in Sydney and spent time on the family cattle and sheep station at Richmond. Herding sheep surely must be the ideal preparation for the high office for which he is nominated today. Upon moving to the Gold Coast, the honourable member established business interests across the coast. He cherished a distinguished local government career, serving as the mayor of Alp Shire and the Gold Coast City Council. Since his election to parliament, the member for Mermaid Beach has served in a variety of roles, most notably and with distinction as the leader of this house. Most recently, in the last term of this parliament, he served as deputy chair on the Economics and Governance Committee and as a member of the Ethics Committee. Now, as the leader has already said, if the member for Mermaid Beach were a betting man, he would understand the long odds that face him today. He's a diamond in the rough. <laughs> <laughs> on this point, I note the nomination for the member for Mulgrave for this high office. I also note the dignity and fairness with which the member for Mulgrave discharged his duties during the last term of this parliament. And I know that, should he be elected again today, he will continue to display the same impartial and respectful approach in governing this House and the same fine character in his personal dealings with honourable members in this House, regardless of their political inclinations. However, that being said, we know that as a former member of, uh, leader of the House, the member for Mermaid Beach stands ready to work together for the good management of the business of this House. This House universally recognises him as a valued and colourful contributor to debates. He has an abiding personal interest in the history of our parliament and our democratic institutions. His integrity and wisdom is unquestioned and his ascension to the role of Speaker would be well and truly deserved, and he would bring impartiality and objectivity to this high office. From the very beginning of his parliamentary career, and I note the Leader has already quoted from his maiden speech, it was an outstanding maiden speech, and I'm going to go there too, Member for Mermaid Beach. He said in this House, I pledge to you, Mr Speaker, my commitment to uphold the dignity, tradition and respect of parliamentary debate in this House during my whole term of residence. Madam Presiding Member, these words, which he has lived out for the last 14 years, together with his outstanding legacy of service to the community, say everything about the character of the member for Mermaid Beach. I commend the honourable member to the House. I call the Deputy Premier. Uh, thank you, Madam Presiding Officer, and I rise to support the nomination of the member for Mulgrave to the Office of Speaker, nominated by the Premier and seconded by the member for Noosa, and I, of course, endorse the statements made by both of them in nominating uh, the member for Mulgrave. He has, of course, been our Speaker these last three years and would bring to the role a continuity of judgment. Uh, that I believe would, uh, would be uh, worthy of the support of all members of this House, and therefore uh, I'm supporting, proud to support him for a further term. Uh, we all know that we come here as passionate representatives of our communities and that we debate matters passionately, and that sometimes that leads to robust discussion 
very occasionally, very occasionally, things get unruly. And the uh, member for Mulgrave as Speaker has proven his ability to uh, maintain decorum in this chamber, to do so in a way that is respectful of all of us and our desires to make a contribution, but also respectful of the institution of the parliament and uh, how it needs to be perceived by the public. He has done so uh, always with fairness, occasionally more fairness than I would have preferred. Uh, he, uh, he made... He, he bestowed upon me a uh, historic, um, a historic uh, recognition in uh, making me the, the first minister to be ejected uh, for quite some time. And uh, I learned my lesson. I can assure you I learned my lesson. He only had to eject me once more uh, after, uh, after that. Um, although I did for that term have the cover of the then member for Cooper, who was... Uh, who was uh, uh, useful to hide behind. Um, I think it's telling uh, that the member for Mulgrave has been respected in uh, his role as Speaker. Uh, the fact that his nomination is seconded by a crossbencher and I know supported by uh, many on the crossbench and also that the Leader of the Opposition uh, paid uh, some respect to him even while nominating uh, somebody else for the role. I can say as someone who's known the member for Mulgrave for a long time, long before we were either of us was in this place, he has always acted uh, with integrity and honesty and sought to serve Queenslanders to the best of his abilities. I want to congratulate him on his re-election in the seat of Mulgrave. I know he's very passionate about representing uh, that community and I think it's uh, very appropriate that we have somebody from the state's far north presiding over this chamber for a further term. He has, of course, been a long-standing member in this chamber. I was honoured to serve with him as a minister in the first term of the Palaszczuk government. And again, I can say that every single one of those days he represented his region and our state and his portfolios with great passion and great integrity. Uh, I want to acknowledge his, um, his passionate advocate, advocacy for our state's First Nations people, uh, something that has shone through throughout his parliamentary service, but also his time as Speaker. I want to acknowledge his family in the gallery and thank them for the sacrifice they make in allowing him to spend the time he does spend in Brisbane being our Speaker. Uh, and so I support the nomination of the member for Mulgrave and urge other members uh, to vote accordingly. Honourable members, a ballot will now be taken in accordance with standing orders. I call the clerk to conduct the ballot. The Honourable Member for Mulgrave and the Honourable Member for Mermaid Beach have been nominated, seconded and have accepted the nomination for the Office of Speaker. A ballot will now be taken in accordance with the provisions of Standing Orders 40 and 41. Ring the bells for four minutes.
close the bars. Honourable members should record their vote by placing a cross in the square to the left of the name of the member for whom they wish to vote. I shall repeat that for members. Honourable members should record their vote by placing a cross in the square to the left of the name of the member for whom they wish to vote. The ballot paper should then be folded and placed into the ballot box at the end of the table. I remind honourable members that if any mark other than a cross is made, or if the cross does not clearly appear in the space provided opposite a member's name, the vote is informal and shall not be counted. Will each mem honourable member please come forward as their name is called to receive their ballot paper? Stephen Seymour James Andrew. Mark Craig Bailey <laughs> Roslyn Mary Bates <laughs> Stephen Andrew Bennett Michael Craig Berkman Jared Peter Blay Sandra Lee Bolton Mark Andrew Boothman Colin Enar Boyce Nikki Ann Boyd Donald John Brown John T. Marie Bush Glenn James Butcher Amanda Jane Cam Michael John Crandon Craig Darrell Crawford David Frank Crucifulli Nicholas Dometto Yvette Marie Dath Michael Christopher Debrini
Cameron Robert Dick. Leanne Margaret Enoch. Diane Elizabeth Farmer. Shannon Marie Fentiman. Deborah K. Frecklington. Mark Lionel Ferner. Laura Jane Gerber. Julianne Claire Gilbert. Ignatia Grace. Aaron David Harper. Michael James Hart. Michael Patrick Thomas Healy. It's on the rip, mate. <laughs> Sterling James Hinchliffe. Jennifer Ruth Howard. Jason Edward Hunt. David Carl Janetsky. Robert Ignatius Catter. Joseph Patrick Kelly. <laughs> Ali Breeze King. <laughs> Shane Roderick King. Shane Andrew Knuth. Jonathan Mark Krause. John Paul Honre Langbrook. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Dale Raymond Last. <laughs> Bri
Brittany Louise Lauger. Anne Leahy. Leanne Marie Linard. James Paul Lister. Cynthia Lillian Liu. Amy McMahon. James Edward Madden. Timothy Leonard Manda. Lance Richard McCallum. James John McDonald. Melissa Faye McMahon. Corinne Patricia McMillan. Bart John Mellish. Brent Andrew Mickelberg. Stephen John Miles. Lachlan Lucas Miller. Stephen James Minikin. Robert Mulhock. Sharice Mullen. Timothy James Nichols. Tim is to his friends. <laughs> Samuel Thomas O'Connor. Barry Leonard O'Rourke. Anastasia Palaszczuk. Joan Ellen Pease. Duncan Anthony Pegg.
Anthony John Perrett. Curtis Warren Pitt. Thank you. Andrew Carey Powell. Jessica Claire Pugh. Oh, sorry. Not too powerful. Jessica. Linus Patrick Power. Almost missed you. Thanks. Daniel Jared Purdy. Kim Elizabeth Richards. Mark Andrew Robinson. Christian Andrew Carr Rowan. Peter Samuel Russo. Mark Thomas Ryan. Bruce Mark Saunders. Megan Alana Jenkins Scanlon. Fiona Stewart Simpson. Robert Clinton James Skelton. Thomas John Smith. Raymond Alexander Stevens. <laughs> Scott James Stewart. James Anthony Sullivan. <laughs> Adrian Tantari. Leslie Alexander Walker. Pat, uh, Trevor John Watts. Patrick Thomas Weir. <laughs> Christopher Guy Whiting.
Honourable Members, the result of the ballot is Mr Pitt, 59 votes. Mr Stevens, 34 votes. No informal votes. I declare the Honourable Member for Mulgrave, having obtained the greatest number of votes, stands elected as Speaker. Honourable Members, uh, I respectfully acknowledge that we are gathered here today on the land of Aboriginal people and pay my respects to Elders past and present. I thank them as First Australians for their careful custodianship of the land over countless generations. We're very fortunate in this country of ours to have two of the world's oldest continuing living cultures in Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples whose lands, winds and waters we all now share. Honourable Members, I'm humbled by the faith that you've put in me uh, in electing me as the Speaker of the 57th Queensland Parliament. Uh, I thank the Premier and the Member for Noosa for moving and seconding, seconding my nomination. And I also wish to uh, thank uh, the Leader of the Opposition and the Deputy Leader of the Opposition for their words of support. Uh, I'm also very pleased to see that the Chamber is once again full. Yeah. And uh, it's, uh, sadly for Members, it means there's nowhere for you to hide. Uh, to be re-elected as Speaker uh, after serving in this role of the 56th uh, Queensland Parliament is indeed an honour. And as you've heard, uh, I'll be the first Speaker to have been elected for two consecutive terms, the last being uh, uh, Speaker Hollis almost two decades ago. I'm pleased to be able to continue to contribute to our parliamentary democracy through my stewardship of the House. To those new members uh, sworn in today, I congratulate you and I look forward to hearing your first speeches. As members of parliament, we all share a great privilege in representing our communities in this place. But this privilege draws its strength from the value of the wider community and that wider community places in our parliament and indeed our democratic system of government. It could be argued that our democracy and the acceptance of the will of the people, now more than ever, is the envy of the world. I want to importantly thank my wife Kerry our children Tristan, Layla and Kobe and my parents Warren and Linda for their unwavering support over what is now my fifth term uh, in Parliament. I acknowledge that without all of their help and support it would not have been possible to achieve any of the things that I have achieved or will achieve uh, in this place. My offer to new members and indeed all members is that my door is always open to you should you need advice or would you raise any matter with me. When I first visited Parliament House, it was for the opening of the 46th Parliament as a proud son of a new member. It was then that my deep respect for this institution began. That respect has grown stronger over the years, the closer I've been to it. Honourable Members, I'm humbled to serve again as your Speaker, and once again I thank you for putting your faith in me. Yeah. I call the Premier. Mr Speaker, can I offer uh, my congratulations on behalf of the government? Um, for your elevation uh, once again to the high office of the Speaker of this Parliament. As I said previously, you always uh, hold this office with dignity and grace, and I also want to congratulate you on behalf of the Government of the way in which you have presided over this House during COVID, and I join with you in saying how wonderful it is to see all of us once again take our chairs with the new members in this House, uh, where we were prevented from doing that due to COVID restrictions. I also acknowledge that your family is unable to be here today, but I know how much they support you and they love you, and family is everything. This is the People's House. I know you will continue to preside over it uh, in that fashion, and I know that you will always be available 
He does put on a very good cup of tea if you ever need to pop into his office uh, to see him. But once again, uh, can I offer on behalf of the government our warmest and sincerest congratulations on this high office. I call the Leader of the Opposition. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. Can I join the Premier in also congratulating you and well done on the result. Um, there were uh, electorates decided by a less number of people in uh, seats of 30,000 people, so you had a commanding win. Um, <laughs> but, uh, Mr Speaker, can I say to you, um, we understand the sacrifice that goes with a job like this. There are few members who live further away from this place than you. And uh, when you are representing um, not just your side of politics, but this House, it comes with a, a great degree of family sacrifice uh, to be in Brisbane often um, representing this chamber uh, when it comes to official uh, dignitaries visiting, and that doesn't go unnoticed. Thank you very much. Uh, like the Premier, I look forward to sitting down to some of your hospitality. I personally lean towards the Speaker's gin over the cup of tea, um, a good Bundaberg product. Um, Mr Speaker, thank you uh, again. Best wishes on behalf of the opposition to, uh, for your role in the term ahead. Thanks very much.